I vow to all the seekers of truth. At the very outset, we have to know that truth is what it is. We cannot change it, we cannot conceptualize it. We have to know it. Unfortunately, at this human awareness level, we cannot know the truth. We have to become the Spirit. Whatever I am telling you today need not be accepted. No need to have blind faith because all of them has praised Sahaja Yoga so much. But keep your mind open. Like scientist, and I put before you this hypothesis, when if it works, as honest people, you have to accept it, because it is for your benevolence and it is for the benevolence of the whole world. I am so very joyous to see these flowers from all the countries where I have so many children. It fills my heart to see the harmony between these flowers, the way they are so harmonious. We have people from all kinds of races, all kinds of religions, all kinds of nationalities, all kinds of political systems. But there is such a beautiful brotherhood and sisterhood among them. Without any effort, it has been achieved. Automatically, they have become so beautiful because there is between ourselves and the reality a very little distance. If we can cover that distance and if we could absorb the reality, then you'll be amazed how you are so fantastic, so glorious, so wonderful. If you see the world, we have problems, ecological problems, political problems, economic problems, family problems, all kinds of problems. But the center point of all these problems is one, that's the human being. And if somehow we can transform the, this human being into a new awareness of universality, then all these problems can be solved. As we had saints in our country, as we had great philosophers in so many countries, all of them have talked about the Spirit. All the scriptures also have talked about becoming the Spirit. But in reality, all these religions, which were very great, which were very pure, were absolutely real, got into mess because people who followed them were either money-oriented or power-oriented. They were never spirit-oriented. They never bothered as to how to achieve this ascent. Take the example of Buddha, Mahavira, both of them did not even want to talk of God Almighty. 
because they thought if you start talking about God Almighty, people just start thinking they belong to this religion, that religion. So let us talk about something which is formless, that is the Spirit, and they insisted that you should have your Self-realization. Without Self-realization they did not want to talk about anything. Same with Muhammad Sahib, Nanak Sahib, they all talked about the formless divinity. Reason being the same. But whether you talk of the form or the formless, it is a talk. Like if you talk about the flowers, you don't get the honey. And if you also talk of the honey, you don't get the honey. Talks are talks, these are words. In Sanskrit, Adi Shankaracharya called it as Shabda Jalam, it's the web of the words. How to go beyond the web of the words? Of course, Kundalini awakening is not a new thing in this country. Sahaja Yoga also is not a new thing. And it has been expressed in all the scriptures that unless and until you become the Spirit, unless and until you are reborn, you cannot know the religion. That doesn't mean you know it by your mental efforts. Mentally everybody knows what is their religion is, or what is their philosophy is, everybody knows mentally. But as you see, recently I was shocked to hear that so many people, Armenians, killed Azerbaijans because they are Muslims, but before going to kill them, they used to read the Bible. How can it be? Just imagine Christians doing that. If you read also about Islam, it's one of the best religions, it's so beautiful, so good. But nobody has understood what Muhammad Sahib has said, that you have to know it. Now the know word comes from the word gna, as in Sanskrit means to know, gna. Early Christians were called as Gnostics because they knew. Knew means to know on your central nervous system. Not to know mentally, but to know on your central nervous system. That's why when as soon as this Paul took over, Christ's disciples ran away. And when Thomas came to India, he hid all the knowledge about reality in a jar in Egypt and then he came down. Why? Because he would have been persecuted by people who were interested in organizing religion, in making money out of it. As a result of all this nonsense, people said, better not talk of religion. If you talk of religion, that means there is a quarrel, there's a fight, there's, I belong to this religion, you belong to that religion, so let us fight. As if religion means you have to fight. Killing people, murdering people, how can it be a religious act? Impossible. But it has become. Because human beings are like that. They can make a mess of everything if you allow them. And if they have made a mess of this, I am not surprised the way they have been killing people, they have been making money, they have been smuggling things, I mean all sorts of things which thugs and decoits won't do, they are doing in the name of God. But that doesn't mean there is no divinity, there is no reality. Now this was a big problem. Some people who got realization, very few at the time of Rama, Sri Rama's father-in-law was Janaka and he gave realization to one person, Nachiketa. So it was a very slow process and the tradition in this country was to give realization only to one person. 
one master had one person to give realization to him among the Nath Panthis in the area of Maharashtra. But then, in the 12th century, Ganeshwara requested his guru that at least allow me to write about it. In his book he wrote, the sixth chapter of Ganeshwari, he wrote about Kundalini. But the people who were in charge of the religion said, no, 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 don't read this sixth chapter. This is not allowed, Nishiddha. That's how people did not read that nor did they try to understand, because that was the only thing written in a local language. Of course, this is written in about, I think, 14,000 years back by Markandeya in Sanskrit, but a very difficult Sanskrit language. Then also Shankaracharya at, at the 6th century. But this was brought to the public by Ganeshwara, but that also was denied. In the villages of Maharashtra, they all sing Namadeva's poem saying that, O oh Mother, give me the yoga, give me the connection with the divine power. They are all singing. From ages they have been singing, not knowing what they are singing about. When the development came through Guru Nanak Sahib, Kabir Das, Ram Das Swami, Tukaram, all these great saints in this country talked, especially Kabir Das and also Nanak Sahib. Very clearly they talked about Kundalini, very, very clearly. But still people misunderstood because there was no way to know it. So, in these modern times, only thing, if I have really done anything, if it is worth it, that I thought that whatever is a discovery for one person has to be for the masses, that people should know about it. Only one person knowing on the central nervous system cannot be accepted. The key cannot be accepted. That's why they were crucified, poisoned. When they died, of course, then they built temples, they built big mosques, they built this, that, but till they lived, nobody accepted them. Somehow or other, I could manage a method by which you could raise the Kundalini of masses. So when the Kundalini rises, what she does, she connects you to this all-pervading power. Now this all-pervading power is doing all living work. Look at these flowers. We take them for granted. Look at our eye. We take it for granted. It's a big work, great work of a very delicate camera. What about your brain, which is another great computer, already programmed? But we just accept it, or we just know it and do not want to know how it works. All the living processes we accept blindfolded, and we are not at all concerned as to know how, how these flowers have come out of the Mother Earth, how they are heights are maintained, how their colors are reproduced from a small little seed. All this comes to us because we do not know about it. But this all-pervading power, which they are talking about pure love, that pure love is the one that energy that does all these beautiful, delicate things. Once you are connected with that, your spirit gets enlightened. In the sense it is an enlightenment, but it enlightens your attention. As your attention enlightens, you become a different personality altogether. First of 
fall, you become collectively conscious. Means you know about others also, you know about your own centers, on your fingertips. Also you know about others, their subtle centers, what is their problem. Now these centers are the ones which are the foundations of our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual being. When you put these centers aside, you are all right. That's how you know here in Delhi we have two doctors and third one is coming up who have got their MD. Cures of surgery. Many diseases which are supposed to be incurable can be easily cured in Sahaja Yoga because this Kundalini, when she passes through these six centers, she enlightens those centers, nourishes those centers and integrates them so in totality you are all right. It's not like that one part of the body is treated, another part is neglected. In totality, in the whole balance and she puts you in the central path of balance. Of course, with this light you become definitely a very wise person. Because your mind you can empty it any time, which we call as thoughtless awareness. At that time you become absolutely peaceful. After little working out this connection. When it is established well, then you become a person which we call as full of doubtless awareness. Means you become so powerful, you can give realization to others, you can cure people, you can talk about Sahaja Yoga as your own knowledge. It's true, I have guided whenever they ask me questions and things about it. But so much has come from within. And the enlightenment has told them that these scriptures are very different from the way the people are following them. We can now see the enlightenment of these great souls who came on this earth to help us. So in the evolutionary process now, we are just standing at the edge of our last breakthrough and that is Self-realization. And the whole world has to get it. Of course I don't know if the whole world will get it or not, but the way it is moving in Sahaja Yoga, in thousands and thousands and thousands everywhere, I feel that lots of people in my lifetime only will get Realization. Not only that, but uh, they will form that beautiful society which doesn't fight, which doesn't have violence, which is not cheating, which is not ambitious, which is not quarreling with each other, which doesn't talk ill of others, which doesn't cut each other's throat. These ideas do not come into their head. They are extremely moral, they don't look at other women, they do not uh, trouble their children, they are the most law-abiding people. Automatically, I don't have to tell them, don't do, don't do. All their bad habits drop out. I've seen one boy who came to me who was a drug addict. He couldn't see me even. He was, you can say, half coma condition. Next morning he gave up his drugs completely. Now for drug you will have this thing, that thing, I mean people are appointing military to fight drug. No need, just awaken them. In awakening, in that little light, you see yourself, what's wrong with you. And also you have the power to throw it away. So you throw it away in no time. I always give an example of a snake in your hand. If it is darkness, you might say that this is not a snake, but it is a rope. And if you are obstinate, you will accept that only. Anybody might tell you, but you won't listen. But in this little light, you will see this is a snake and you will throw it away. That's how it has worked. I must say in Delhi also, I must give my full appreciation and congratulations to the doctors. 
Here there are so many doctors who have done wonders, who have taken up Sahaja Yoga as a scientific uh, system of the Divine and they have brought it down to the level of the medical science of the parasympathetic. I'm amazed the way they are working out. Even in Canada we have another doctor who has worked it out, how uh, the dead souls act and all that is so beautifully. There are some scientists who have worked out the carbon and how the carbon is on Muladhara and how it works. It's really remarkable how these scientists have taken it up seriously and are trying to work it out. Everywhere they are working. I'm amazed that people, there are some Muslims who are now trying to write Quran enlightened, somebody has written already Gita enlightened. All these efforts are done for no payment at all. Of course, I don't take any money, it's all right, because after all, for a living work, what work, how much money do we pay to the Mother Earth? Nothing. So you can't pay for it. But all of them also, they don't take any money, they are working very hard, they are going all over the world to help us. We have one, another great doctor who has worked very hard in Russia. He is a gentleman from Australia, but parents are Russians. So he went there. When I went to Russia, I was surprised how Germans rushed there to help me. And I said, how are you all here? They said, Mother, don't you think it's our duty? What our forefathers have done, we have to rectify. Such love, such attention. You can't believe these are Germans that are so, so beautiful, so delicately they handled all the people. It's something so beautiful within yourself. It's so magnanimous, righteous, it's so moral. All that starts manifesting. That is how humanity has to emancipate. And all this credit they are giving to me, but I would say also credit to them, because they are very honest and intelligent people. They could see the point very clearly. In these modern days when people just talk of science and of technology, to accept the divine technology is a very difficult thing. But when they see the results, they are honest to accept it and to understand it. That is how we are going to work out the problems of this world, especially the problem, political problems. Thank God to Mr. Korbachev that it is now subsided quite a lot. But now we have another problem of fundamentalism and Sahaja Yoga is the only way we can solve it because we believe in all the religions, in all the saints, all the prophets and all the incarnations and all the essences of it and we worship all of them. So how can we fight? There cannot be fundamentalism. This is the solution today for all the people who believe in one religion, the rest of them are all wrong. This is how the second problem which is facing us now can be easily solved through Sahaja Yoga. I am very happy, I am very thankful to all of those who have sent me all these beautiful flowers reminding me of their love for me. Every airport I leave, I feel my heart is wrenched with all the people who are there and I start thinking now, when will I meet them again? And when I go to another airport, I see all of them there standing and singing. I said, all right, I have to be here also. It's such a satisfying thing. I never feel actually my age or anything, no work. It is so satisfying. It is such an energy giving thing. So energy giving to see that so many people are enjoying their life, their children, their family life, their social life. We have to create this new world, a beautiful world. We are not 
going to allow this world to be destroyed by the stupidity of few people. But wisdom has to come to all of us. On this day I was born uh, and actually I did not know that I will achieve anything in my lifetime. Really, I tell you, my father, who was a realized soul, used to always tell me, don't talk about any reality, don't say anything, till you have found out the amass evolution of people, just don't say a word, because you will create another Quran or Bible or something, it is useless. So you first of all, see to it that you achieve that state for human beings. And I'm so happy that it is spreading so fast. Not because of me, it is because of all of them that once they get the light, they enlighten other people. So also I thank you all very much for this celebration and in my heart I also celebrate the way you people have come up. You have achieved so much for your achievements. I congratulate you all. Thank you very much.